Welcome. This is Peter Scarsoletti from Chiology, the Australian provider of acupuncture and Chinese medicine continuing professional development, coming to you from Sydney, Australia. Welcome to this complimentary online recorded seminar, Treating Chong Mai by Yoan Devine. If you have come across this seminar online or through social media and have accessed it through a Vimeo link and are just watching, but wish to claim formal continuing professional development points, download the seminar notes and a formal CPD certificate via completing the quiz, then please head over to the Chiology website to register formally. Relevant links can be found in the Vimeo description box below or simply go to www.chiology.com.au and head over to the online learning section. I will soon pass you over to Yoan, our presenter, in just a moment, but would like to introduce Yoan to you as the main inheritor of JD of Dr. JD Van Buren's teachings, who has continued his legacy and teaches extensively in Europe and Israel and has also taught in Australia. Dr. Van Buren was an extremely important influence in bringing acupuncture to the Western world. His fascinating story and also Yoan's bio can be found on the Chiology website or links in the Vimeo description box below too. When I decided a number of years ago to search out one of the main lineage teachers of Dr. Van Buren's legacy, my searching led me to Yoan through contacting Dr. Van Buren's wife, Pauline. We then hosted a seminar in Australia on the first part of the Stems and Branches curriculum, which was well received. And that particular uh, seminar was recorded and will be available online soon, or possibly now, depending on when you're watching this. Just make sure to check on the Geology website for what's available. And the next part of the curriculum is actually being taught in this year, 2019, and we will mention more about that later. So before we start, I'd like to let people know of the events we have coming up in October and November of this year, that's 2019, in Sydney, Brisbane, and Melbourne. But we will talk about those at the end of the lecture in depth. But for those who are, interesting, who are interested in learning more from Yoan, I will just tell you exactly what those particular events are now, and we'll talk about them at the end of the lecture. So we have the Pediatric Acupuncture, Childhood Development, Related Pathologies, Diagnostics and Treatment. So that's going to be available in Brisbane on October 12th, and in Melbourne on November 9th. So that is a one day lecture, or seminar should I say. And then we have Introduction to Naging Pulse Diagnostics plus Rapid Diagnosis using Observation of Spirit, Shen and Facial Color. So that's an evening lecture in Sydney on the 22nd of October. Then we have Jing Chi Shen, Classical Acupuncture Pulse Diagnostics and Treatment of the Three Treasures in Clinical Practice. And that's going to be in Sydney. That's two days and October 26th and 27th. Then we have Acupuncture According to the Philosophy of Heavenly Stems and Earthly Branches 2019. The 12 Earthly Branches, DJ, and the Deep Energy or Qi. The Foundations and Philosophy Applied in Clinic. So they're all of the seminars. We're going to be talking about those at the end of this lecture. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to hand things over to Yoan. If you can talk to us a little bit about uh, Dr. Van Buren prior to starting the lecture, that would be amazing as I love the stories about him. He was a very fascinating man. So I'll just pass, pass it over to you now, Yoan. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Uh, very nice to be with you. Um, yeah, Dr. Van Buren, he was a, he was a fascinating man. <clears throat> The first time I visited one of his lectures, um, I, I didn't understand him so much because he was not an easy teacher, but he radiated uh, all um, light of Chinese medicine. And I knew that would be one of my main teachers because this man uh, was a special man. He, he, he got his doctor's degree in, in China, uh, I think in Taiwan. Um, and he promised there to be a teacher in Chinese medicine, which was not his, his uh, wish actually from inside, but he promised to do that, to bring uh, acupuncture to the Western world. And he did, and he was a very spiritual man. And uh, I think 
we were very lucky because um, when he started uh, giving lectures to us, um, a lot of teachers left him at that moment, and so we we had a chance to have lectures from day one, from the from the first year up to the fourth year of our studies, um, and that was amazing. Um, because he was not so organized in his teaching, we had to organize it ourselves. And if he did that, then we got so much out of it. And there are many teachers in the world, main teachers, uh, who are well known, who started studying with Dr. Van Buren. And he, he brought something in you, he, he gave you something which is very special. And I think the best I can explain that is that he always said, Philosophy, Chinese philosophy is not something which is just, just read in a book, but you need to apply it. And so if you want to do that, you need to change yourself. You need to change something inside. You need to know yourself to be able to apply Chinese philosophy in clinic. Um, and that's what he did. That's what he did with many people. Uh, sometimes harsh, sometimes more soft, but yeah, many people actually changed and still changing because of his work. And so knowing yourself is, is the first thing you need to know when you want to work with Chinese philosophy. And he was the, the bridge, the, uh, the chi to um, enhance that so that you're unable, unable to work with that. So a very special man, which I was able to follow till, till he died in 2003. And uh, I'm still thanking for that. Maybe that's enough about him for now. Okay. And we go on with the, uh, the lecture of today, treating Chong Wai. Um, you see here on the slide, you see um, the Chinese character of Chong Wai. We will discuss that a little bit later um, because that's important to understand that. Um, I think we go first to um, what we're going to talk about uh, for the rest of the time about Chong Wai. I will tell a few things about the history of the Exxon Meridians and uh, of course something about Jin because the, the Chiang Mai, the other Exxon Meridians, they, they, are the, the, they are hosting the Jin in the body. And of course, we need to talk a little bit about the pulses, although it's a very uh, practical subject. Um, we still need to say a few words about it. Uh, we will talk about the classics because the classics, they say a lot of things about Chiang Mai, but they, they don't match sometimes. And, and so why is that? Why don't they match all the time? And what does it mean if they don't match? Um, and so then we will go on with treating Chiang Mai. Of course, not the whole lecture is two-day lecture, so I can't cover all the things. But we will talk a little bit about the principles of treating extra meridians. Um, and then we will spend some time was the starting point of Chiang Mai because the classics, they, they have different points, different areas in the body where Chiang Mai starts. And so what does that mean? Because they are all correct, but what does it mean if it starts at one spot or the other spot? And then we will uh, share some moments with needle techniques. Um, and then of course, we will talk about spring four, the master point of Chiang Mai. And uh, as an addition, I will, discuss some uh, other points on the Chiang Mai channel uh, and talk about some energetics of these points. Um, here you see Chiang Mai psychology. Um, this is actually a very interesting slide. This is one of the things which brought me to study uh, Chiang Mai because I learned this in the lecture from Dr. Van Buren years and years and years ago and I thought, what is this? Why is this? This is such a deep problem. So Chiang Mai has to be very uh, important. Um, the, last, the last one, no courage for asking for help. That actually I added myself uh, because I've seen that a lot of people who come in with uh, Chiang Mai psychological problems, they are brought to you by other people. Uh, they don't have the guts. Of course, they don't say that. They say, I don't need it. Uh, but usually they don't have the courage to ask for help because they are too exhausted. They, they say, I'm not able to be cured again. And so uh, that's really some of the main aspects of a trauma psychology problem. 
but this is um, this was this slide was one of the incentives for me to study Choma. Now, going to the history, uh, you see here different books like the Neijing Suen, the Nanjing, but the main book we use usually in and still nowadays, uh, when we think about external readings, is a Jian Ji Yu Ji and Ji Jing. Um, that's a comprehensive manual of acupuncture and observation. That is written after um, Christ, yeah, it's AD. And so it's, it's, it's recent uh, compared to the Neijing Suen, for instance. And this was one of the first books where there was a primitive description of the eight X meridians and also of the, the main meridians. But we still use this book uh, as a major source for the uh, knowledge we have about the extra meridians. Um, before that, it was not so um, easily treated. Even when we think about the Neijing Suwen, um, when we think about the first chapter of the Neijing Suwen, uh, that is a very interesting chapter because um, in that chapter is asked why people in the past uh, became 100 or 120 years old and nowadays they don't. Um, and then the answer is that uh, it's, you need to take care of yourself to be able to get 100 or 120 years old. And then they start to talk about the gene. So the, the main difference from before this time is that the disease was coming from the spirit. The disease was something from outside or was not possible to go around it. This is something happening to you. It was not your fault. It was something from the spirits. And from this time on, from 200 BC, um, people were seen as being important in um, uh, gaining health or understanding health. Um, and after that, is they talk about the Jing. And that's also a very special transformation because before that time, the Jing was much more uh, something from your parents only. It was something about your destiny and you didn't ever touch that. Not, not good to touch your Jing. And during history, more and more people discussed the Jing as something which came from your parents, but you can still influence it by herbs or by uh, acupuncture or by Qigong. But before this time, before the Neijing Suwen, um, it was something you didn't want to look at. You, you could look at it, but you didn't want to treat it. Um, and so the Gen Jio Jia Ji Jing is the first book who really describes the pathways of the, <coughs> of the uh, extra meridians and of the Chiang Mai. And, um, then we, from that moment on, we started to understand uh, how we can use these extra meridians. This is, again, here you see uh, Li Shi Zhen, the Qi Jing Bai Mai. He actually made a deep study and he's actually the last one. There are not many more people after him who really um, discuss something new. He added a few new things. Um, and we still use that. And that is, even later, the, the, the 16th century, and when we think about open hourly, uh, sorry, open point, opening points, or a <coughs> uh, couple of points, that actually is all from the time uh, uh, after uh, Christ, not before Christ. It's not not a real old thing, it's a more modern thing to use the opening points and the, um, the couple points. Uh, in the past, in the very past, when they started to study the extra meridians in China, they much more worked on, on points on the, on the channel uh, instead of using open points, opening points. <coughs> One shoe in the, in the Mai Jing, this is the Pulse Classic. Uh, he describes, if you want to read that, it's, it's interesting, but also that's AD. 
uh, describe the characteristics of the pulses of that meridian. And they are very clear, and we will discuss a few maybe later, but that's also not from ancient time. Now, these are nearly all the names I have found of the extra meridians, or the orb meridians, or miraculous meridians, or you name it. Um, whenever you open a book of the classic, it, it is described like that, and they're all actually, um, there's something which is missing. The, 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 the words, maybe I think the constitutional meridian comes the closest um, to the meaning of the extra meridians, uh, because they, they move and they just distribute Jing. And so it means that they carrying out the destiny in life, which is called in Chinese Ming. So the destiny in life is, is start, that started from conception and from birth. Both are very important periods, which we'll discuss later, um, where your destiny is defined and is brought on to the extra meridians. And so I think the constitutional meridians is maybe the best word for the extra meridians. The Qi Jing Ba Mai, the word is actually best. We usually don't use these Chinese names so much, but so they circulate inherited Qing and distribute the Qing. So it's when it is inherited, we say it's prenatal, and when after birth, it's postnatal. So what is Jing? Jing is, is vitality. Um, it's pure. And it is something which follows the natural order of your life. The harmonious uh, development. It is taking care of harmonious development. So it brings you back to your own nature. So it's, it's very personal. It's the source of life which makes you you, but it is not a social quality. It really brings you your own vitality, your own vital chi, and bring it to your own um, correct chi. Maybe that's the best to say. So it, in, the, in a way, you can say it's the foundation of your consciousness. Um, consciousness is, of course, also the heart, but it starts within the kidney. So the, um, the eight extra meridians, they circulate this very pure, vital foundation of consciousness. It's, it says here, Jing means best essence and subtle, but on the other hand, it's the most physical energy we have. It's, it really is very close to your body. It represents your physical body, it says as well. Um, let's continue. We see here a slide that you that I have divided, not I, but this is from the classics as well, the pre-heavenly Jing Chi, where Dr. Van Buren said it is housed in the right kidney. Um, that starts from conception. So the moment the father and the mother bring the Jing together, and there's a new Jing and a new Shen created. That's the beginning of the pre heavenly Jing, and it is the mandate of heaven. So from that moment on, the Ming already is partly defined. And then we have the pregnancy, and then during birth, something else happens. And when you are born, the Jing and the kidney energy grasp the lung chi, the cosmic chi, and roots it down in the lower jaw. And then there is also postnatal Jing Chi, <coughs> which is housed in the left kidney. And that nourishes the body, gives you the possibility to live a life and experience that life. Uh, so when we think about memory, part of memory is due to postnatal Jing Chi. The memory of who you are, what you are, what you are doing in this life, that's more the prenatal Jing Qi. And both Jing Qi actually flow in the extra meridians. So 
you could say that any trauma during the time of conception will affect the pre-heavenly Jing Qi. But the first three months of pregnancy, um, these are um, the, these are more no how to say that in English. This is the first three months of pregnancy are governed by the energy of the mother. The Jing Qi and the Yuan Qi are not really developed yet. That starts from the third month of uh, the pregnancy, and before that time, uh, it is the energy of the mother which is most important um, for the child. So it means that the first three months, if something happens to the child or there is a very emotional disturbance of the mother, that will affect the uh, pre heavenly Jing Qi. So that will also affect the eight extra meridians. Um, <coughs> so, as I said, when you are born, the, the Jing Qi grasps the Qi of the ones, and that defines your destiny and motivates it and um, strengthens or opens the zhe, the willpower, to open up to life uh, in society, to bring you a certain destiny in your identity, who you are. Um, there are a few steps and also described in the first chapter of the Suwen, where when you're seven years old or when you're 40 years old, there are steps in the extra meridians. We all know that. But one step is the teething. Uh, when, when teasing starts, when the changing of teeth starts, that's also a major step in individuation. So you can see that the Jin during life develops, um, opens up, gives you more structure in your individual process. And so when you are focused on the Jin, when you can, when you are able to uh, to keep your Jin healthy and pure, uh, you become more authentic. And so it means that when the eight extra meridians flow easily or have a healthy constitution, it means that you are more authentic. So the more authentic people are, you can say the more uh, free flow of qi of jing qi is in the eight extra meridians. I remember that uh, Leon Hammer once told me that love resides in the kidneys, in the jing qi. And the realization and the expression of it is by the heart. Um, so it means that jing qi coming from your parents and when it's related to love, it's something which is very, very pure and is related to a heavenly concept. It is it's not um, ethical. The moment love becomes ethical, we have, let's say you are in love or you like something or you like someone or you don't like or you dislike or whatever, that has nothing to do with the love of the Jin Chi. The love of the Jin Chi is not personal. The way we make it personal is the way we live our life. So to determine or to, to understand the quality of Jin means that you need to understand the impersonal Impersonal, yeah, impersonal love, which is um, not so easy. It, it, uh, you need to find it through self-knowledge. Um, okay, that's that's a lecture on its own. So I don't want to do it now, but um, let's let's continue with the next slide. But it is a very interesting subject, maybe for the future. I think I can skip this one. So let's go to Chung. If you look to this Chinese character, you see on the two sides of the character, you see something which you also find in the character of the Wu Xing. It's Xing. This is the character Xing, and it means movement. Uh, so what moves? What moves is the Jing. And it, the Jing is mobilized and moved from a constitutional level to a postnatal level. So it is an important place in Chiang Mai to bring Jing from prenatal to postnatal, from 
constitutional to a quiet. So it is, it's a bridge, um, a high street, it says here, something penetrates through it. It is, it is a, it's a space from the prenatal jinchi to the postnatal jinchi. So it means that it is the, um, I think Jeffrey Yuan calls this the uh, blueprint, which is a very good word. Uh, the blueprint by which you are born. And from that blueprint, you continue your life. So again, that's very much related to the Ming, to the destiny of your life. And the first three months of your pregnancy are very important to see how easily or how difficult sometimes that goes. So you don't touch the Chong Mai so easily because it brings you um, your constitutional blueprint in this life. And so you don't want to change or disturb that so much. And that's probably why some people say you should never treat Chiang Mai in children, for instance, because that's, that's the, the, the chi of children goes very quick, so you can easily disturb the energy. And you don't see that so much in the beginning. When you disturb Chiang Mai, at the end of your life, you will find the disturbances easily. So be careful with um, treating Chiang Mai. So it means that when you come from constitution, prenatal to postnatal, it must be a channel which contact nearly everything in your body, but especially the lower jiao and of course the middle jiao where you have the spleen and the stomach and the chest and the face, uh, because this is the expression in the world. And so the Chong Wai needs to have a relationship to all these three areas, but also to your feet, how you stand on the earth and how you move on the earth. So it is a really bridge which brings you into this life. So this is a picture of the uh, extra meridian pulses. Um, the red lines is the level on which you can feel the pulse. So when you see the three um, regions of the pulse, more proximal, middle, and more distal, you see when you want to, when you feel the Dumai pulse, it means that on all three levels. Um, the pulse is easily found. Ren Mai on the blood level, you could say, and Chong Mai on the, some people say organ level, some say Jing level, uh, deep level. You need to feel the pulse there. It should be, uh, this, it's sometimes described as pounding or forceful. Uh, so when the Chong Mai is flowing well, you will feel a good pulse on the three levels on both sides. Yeah, on the, in, the, in the depth of the pulse. It means that when all the deep pulses are insufficient, so you don't feel this, this forceful pulse in the depth, that could be a sign of a Chong Mai insufficiency. And so when that goes together, for instance, with, uh, let's say, Du Mai very strong, actually a bit too strong, then you could say that Du Mai is compensating for the insufficiency of Chong Mai. Or like when the Ren Mai is too forceful, too pounding, and the Chong Mai is deep, then the Ren Mai is um, compensating for Chong Mai. And it doesn't mean that you need to treat Ren Mai, but you need to treat Chong Mai, and then you will see that Ren Mai will calm down. So you should always compare these three depths to each other to see which, um, how people actually live. Because when the Chong Mai, for instance, is very insufficient, and Dumai is very active as a compensation for the insufficiency of Chomai. It means that people are very active, they do a lot of things, they can't stop, they don't sleep so much, and so on, and they still suffer from a depression. And so you can calm down Dumai, but actually you make it worse then. You need to work on Chomai first to build the, uh, the foundation, and they, by themselves, they will calm down because they don't need to compensate so much. So there are many more examples like this. It is important to always compare these three levels on the pulse. Um, 
this is this is also very interesting because Li Jian said the the pulse should be deep, uh, wiry, and firm of a Chongmai pulse. And Jeffrey Yuan says deep, wiry, tight, and floating on the chi position. Um, it means that he describes the uh, the kidney energy there. He describes that the kidney energy should be strong. And TCM, we often read choppy, weak, stringy, thin, tight. This is very different from the other ones. Um, and that actually, I think it's, it's related to more uh, herbal medicine than, than acupuncture. Um, I'm, I'm not a herbalist, but I think it describes some weakness of the extra meridians of, of the, of the Chongwa in this case. While Li Shi Chen and Jeffrey Yuan describe the, um, the quality, how it should be, especially on that deep level, it should be stronger. And Dr. Van Buren, he added something in the pulses, which I never read somewhere else. Um, and that's when the Chongma is not functioning well. And that's uh, what they called, he called the sucking pulse on the Guan position left of the liver position. Um, I understand that as, as a progression of weakness. Um, when the liver energy is getting weaker in qi, it means that you get more a spreading pulse and maybe a yielding pulse. You, you really have to go into the depth to feel it. You could easily uh, press it away. And then there is a time that you feel this sucking quality. And I can't explain it in words, but whenever you have felt it, it feels like your finger is pulled inside towards the pulse. So it, it's something which, that's the best way I can describe it. But when you ever have found it once, you will always find it because it's a very special feeling. And when you feel that, it means that the trauma needs to be treated. Um, so this is very different from all the uh, TCM pulses, for instance. And the other pulses, like deep, wiry, firm, and tight, and floating in cheap position, is how it should feel when it's healthy. When that doesn't appear, when it is uh, in the depth, it's insufficient. If it is too soft or too dampy or uh, too deep, that means that there is an imbalance in the trauma energy. <coughs> These are the main books you should study um, when you study the extra meridians. And you will see in these texts of these books there are many different texts. They really describe different things. So let's go to the Suwen first. Uh, the Sea of the Jingmai. Um, commands the humidification and irrigation through impregnation of the small and large valleys. So it, it says something about fluids, about um, the flow of water, which is which the flow of qi, the flow of life. It makes its junction with the yang ming at the ancestral muscle. The ancestral muscle is the stomach 30. So you see here that Chung Mai makes a connection to Yang Ming. Yang Ming is something postnatal. So Chiang Mai comes from the prenatal Qi, is the bridge to stomach 30. And from stomach 30, it brings it into postnatal Qi. And stomach 30 is part of the stomach meridian, where you have the possibility to, have to go up to the abdomen and up to the chest and up to the face. And you see here, um, when Chiang Mai gives rise to illness, the breath set counter current when the inside is tense. That's in chapter 60. It means that it is possible to have a rebellious chi, which means that you can vomit or have phlegm or um, coughing, which is due to a Chongmai problem. So that is a progression of energy, of illness, because what you will see first is that when the Wei Qi is not strong enough, then the system will ask for help. 
So you get help from other young chis like like Taiyang or Dai Mai or Du Mai or Yang Chiao Mai. And so when that all gave up, then maybe the Chong Mai becomes comes into problems, like uh, also the marrow then can come into problems because the Jing is so much affected. And then there's possible that there is this uh, countercurrent on the inside, which will lead to, for instance, vomiting. So you can't say that vomiting or coughing or phlegm is, is a Chiang Mai problem, but as a progression of diseases, yes, it can manifest as vomiting, but you will see then a lot of yang insufficiency in, in the history of the patient, you see a lot of other diseases. So it's a chronic problem. Here you see in the nudging, it says similar thing like counterflow. Um, the ancient sages constructed ditches and reservoirs for the waterways in the event of something extraordinary. When rain pours down from heaven, the ditches and reservoirs become full. It means that the, the extra meridians are kind of reservoirs. They, the surplus goes to the extra, to the meridians, and when the meridians are over full, then it can give it to the extra meridians. It's kind of balance for the main meridians. Um, I think it's most important to understand that the all extraordinary vessels actually derive directly, more or less, sometimes indirectly from the kidney area. And so from the kidney area, they play a very important role in fighting external pathogenic factors. Um, to keep the, the main channels healthy, uh, to keep the Jing Qi healthy, and so and be able to uh, um, give su support to the Wei Qi as well. If the kidney Qi is deficient, the deficient damage is the Chong Mai. It means that when people are exhausted or when they grow very old and the kidney energy is more or less deficient, then it will also affect the Chong Mai. And it means that you lose that quality of mean, of your destiny. And that's what you see in all people, that they lose a certain interest in life. They just, well, they live their life, but they don't feel the, the challenge of life anymore. That also is is a Chiang Mai problem. And then some people say they are depressed or there is dementia or, um, but it comes from a kidney insufficiency first. So you can treat the Chiang Mai, but if the kidney is deficient, you're not able to treat the Chiang Mai. So it always means that whenever you treat, you want to treat Chiang Mai, you need to know the quality of the kidney she and start there first. To build it by points like CD4, Rather 23, the kidney points and do my pro do my four for instance so you need to work on the kidney first before you can access tumor um, choma and do my here is a combination uh, where it says it's combined are the way of the 12 meridians if Chong and Dumai do not function correctly, the 12 readings do not return to the great meeting of vessels lung nine. Um, we know Chong Mai as the C of the 12 readings. Usually Dumai is not so often mentioned here, but it's as important. It, it, the Chong Mai is an energy which starts at birth. And when we think about for instance, a baby, and I will discuss that later in, when I'm in Australia. Um, when you think about when you have a baby in your arms, and as a mother you breastfeed the baby, then the baby lies against the body of the mother, and you hold the baby like this, and then the, the mouth of the baby is against the breast of the mother, the belly of the baby is against the mother, and you hold the baby uh, near the buttocks, so it means that Renmai is actually um, stimulated and you cover the energy of Dumai with your hands. And later when the baby starts to grow up, 
uh, it, it raises its head and looks into the world. And that is the uh, activation of the Dumai. And so the Chongmai and Dumai and also Renmai, of course, they, they, they are, that's a trinity which um, brings you in life, brings you into society. And that starts with Lung 9. Lung 9 is the, the point which brings all the energy together, like the cosmic chi of the lungs, the, the gu chi of the stomach comes into the lungs, and Lung 9 brings that inside your body. So it means that Chiang Mai and Dubai combined with, I think, also Ren Mai give you the possibility to live. So Chiang Mai is the center, and Dumai and Ren Mai are the branches by which we live our life. The balance Dumai and Ren Mai is properly uh, taken care of. It means that you are able to stand on your both feet. Um, you can see a description of the Ling Shu chapter 38, and there's something strange in this, uh, strange in this uh, translation because it says as it goes up, it comes out in the throat and the cheekbones and seeps into all the yang and pours the seminal essence into all that is all the yin channels, and then it descends to that zone, which is kidney four. And I think that should be CV17. So from the face, it goes down to the chest, and then it goes to stomach 30. That to me makes more sense, but the text says kidney four. But for me, that doesn't make so much uh, sense because um, when it is in the face, it should contact the chest and the abdomen. Um, Let me go here. And from stomach 30, it goes to the, uh, to the legs, and then it makes contact with the, uh, with the earth through the um, liver, spleen, and kidney points. If the Chiang Mai is blocked or is too insufficient, the descending branches are weak, and you we'll see that the pulses on the foot, like the pulse in stomach 42, uh, is very low, or you even can't feel it at all. That is, or the, the feet are too cold. That's a sign that this, this descending uh, channel of Chiang Mai is not running well. Um, stomach 42 is called Chong Yuan, which is rushing, rushing Yang. So it means that is able to feel the yang of the Chiang Mai into the feet. Um, and from stomach 42, there of course is a relationship to spleen four, <coughs> the opening point of Chiang Mai. So this is the chapter where the Chiang Mai is described, the flow of the chapter, the flow of the Chiang Mai is described. That repeat, let me repeat this. Um, so this, in this chapter, you see the flow of the Chomai, uh, how it flows from the face down to stomach 30, and how it from stomach 30 flows down into the, the, the feet uh, to stomach 42, and how you can diagnose the quality of stomach of Chomai on the dorsum of the foot. Now, treating Chiang Mai, we need to discuss some principles um, first. So, first of all, the way I was taught by Dr. Kibun is that you treat only from diagnosis and not from disease. So, first you need to diagnose what's going on. It's not that you say, ah, someone is depressive, I treat Chiang Mai. You need to understand it from the post-diagnosis or by other means of diagnosis, but first you need to diagnose the quality of qi in the body and see how that matches with your, uh, your um, 
pathology and symptoms you see in the patient. Um, often people say the trajectory should be tender. I don't think that's always needed, although when Chiang Mai is, is affected, the stomach 30 is usually painful. But that's nearly the only point where it's really painful. Stom sometimes painful, but most of the time stomach 30 is painful. Um, so it means when you want to treat Chiang Mai, you treat the essence, you treat that bridge from prenatal to postnatal. It means, as I discussed before, that it is a chronic problem. So you don't treat acute problems uh, with Chiang Mai. Uh, of course, the, the way the patient presents himself can be very acute. Uh, but it's not an acute problem from healthy and then suddenly diseased. It's a constitutional chronic problem. And so it also means that you need to be patient when you treat your mind. So when you want to work on the uh, constitutional level, when you see that something went wrong during pregnancy or during birth or um, just after it's also possible, then um, you need to take time. Um, uh, Dr. Van Buren said when you treat your mind, and that is a, maybe also for the other extra meridians, you don't do that every week or you don't do it even every month. Usually um, it takes more time. So when you do your mind, uh, in a way we will discuss later, it's better to wait a few months before you do that again. So you give the body the chance to pick up the Jinchi, to pick up the original Ming, the original destiny and to act accordingly. So it's not something you do so easily and you don't do it in acute uh, patients. <coughs> I forgot about the needle technique. Needle technique. Um, there are different ideas about needle technique. Um, some people say you needle deeper. Some people say, and we'll discuss that, you first access the kidney energy and then you go to Chiang Mai. Um, some people say you need to vibrate in a special way so that you make contact with the Jing. Uh, Dr. Van Buren just needled it, uh, I think a bit deeper than kidney energy usually, because it's a deeper level. But he didn't vibrate it, but other people did. And then the direction of needling, and we'll discuss that later, the direction in which you access the point is very important with Chiang Mai treatment. Now let's first start with where does Chiang Mai start? Um, these, I think there are even more, more areas where Chiang Mai starts according to the classics. Sometimes it's translated as the uterus, which is probably the same as Bao Zong. And in male people, it is Bao Zong is more the bladder or the genitals sometimes. Um, I've seen texts where it starts at CV1, even two, even three, even four. Stone 30 is one of the starting points and they all are correct, but they, they describe something different. When the Chiang Mai start at Bao Zong or the uterus, it means that it, it starts from a life-giving energy. If it starts at stomach 30, for instance, it is much more a postnatal uh, quality which you have access to. So when it is described, you read that text uh, as a postnatal event. When you start reading the text where it starts with Bao Zhong, you, your access is much more how Chiang Mai gives you life, how it supports and maintains your life. And from that area of the lower abdomen, so the genitals as a foundation, it runs to CB2, and then it runs down from kidney 11 and stomach 13, sometimes even text say spleen 12, it runs down to the feet, and it runs up to kidney 21. Um, Plane 12, by the way, is also called Russian Gate, Chung Men. So it's, it's a gate where Chung Mai flows up or flows down. 
Um, so it is the area is the lower jaw where it starts and it spreads to the feet and to the abdomen and up to the chest. But even in the past when you read about Chiang Mai, sometimes uh, it didn't even reach these chest points where we have now the, let's say, the, the, the shoe points of the kidney are part of Chiang Mai now. In the past, they weren't. It just stopped around kidney 20, kidney 21. Um, so there's a lot of ch change into the understanding of Chiang Mai. Um, when we look at the opening point, uh, spleen four. The first, let's look at the the name Gong Sun. It says grandfather and grandson, which is a proper translation. But it, the only thing you can say it describes the uh, how it comes from your parents or even grandfather given to the grandson. It says something about prenatal and postnatal. But Gong Sun is also a name of the Chinese emperor. And so the Chinese emperor, and we come back to that when we, we talk a little bit about um, the, the Renmai channel, the Chinese emperor is the ambassador of heaven. So it means that you could say you have an emperor in heaven, which resides at the North Pole Star, as the center of the universe. And the Chinese emperor is the ambassador on earth to take care of the earth. So when you want to take care of the earth, it means you have to have contact with the earth. Um, so spleen four is in relationship to stomach 42, which is, as I said, the descending channel of Chiang Mai going to stomach 42. And so there is, you come through spleen four, you can balance the Chiang Mai when you balance it to stomach 42. Um, but moreover, the Chiang Mai, as the Yin Wai Mai, they have contact with the abdomen, the chest, and the face. So they, the three levels of your body are balanced through Chiang Mai and Yin Wai Mai. And so the Chinese emperor, as the ruler of the body, as the ruler of his country, um, needs to have contact with all the areas, and it does it through spleen four. Very interesting is that it says grandfather, grandfather and grandson because it is like grandfather, father and son. It means like there are offsprings and this is the third offspring. So when you look to the meridian system, you can say you have spleen four as a lower point of the spleen meridian. And that before that we have the um, Chiang Mai, Spleen 4, and then you have the little um, lower branches in the skin, it's called Sundu, and Spleen 4 is also a major point to treat Sun, Lo, Sun, Sun Luo. It means that, for instance, when you see all these little uh, veins in, on the skin where you see there is there are bluish, there's stagnation in these veins, it's very red, there's a lot of heat, you can treat that with spleen four as well. So spleen four is a very powerful point to, to treat the lower channels because it is so linked to the, all the levels in the body through the lower meridians, but also through Chiang Mai. Here you see Chong channel and Ren channel. Our child started from Bao Chong. Um, and this is very interesting because you see they rise running up the back on the inside of the spine and make the C of the Jing Luo. And of course, they, they run on the um, outside of the abdomen where we can access the Chong and the Ren Mai. But there is also an inside more, more towards the Du Mai, which is actually Chong Mai and Ren Mai. So we have. When we think about the beginning of uh, Chiang Mai and Ren Channel in the Bao Zhong, this is the beginning of life. It runs up on both sides, one to the vertebral column and one to the abdomen. 
So it gives light on the yang side and on the yin side. So it starts in the bowel zone, the inside of the uterus, palace of Jing. Some people say Dong Chi, the moving Chi, which is grasped by the kidney when you are born, is brought to, in between the kidneys. Some people say it is brought to the bowel zone. In man, it's the bladder. It is the origin of life. And from that origin, it goes up to the um, vertebral column and up to the abdomen. Um, it means that when we look at this picture, we have the origin of life, Bao Zhong, and then we have Chong and Ren Mai going up, not as being active by itself, but as a responding to the mirror, they are mirror of the origin of life. So the, um, let's say the emperor on earth, the Chinese emperor on earth, as the ambassador on earth, is not doing so much, but it understands the origin of life and brings that to society, not by acting, but doing things which are necessary, like they respond. So when things have the tendency to flow in a direction which is not right or is improper or incorrect, then the emperor made his decision to change that, and that's also the Chong and Ren Mai. So <clears throat> although Chong Mai often is seen as a very active and very young quality, I think more it is more a female quality. It's more a responding, a more earth quality. It is um, finding connection. Like yang is very much action. Action. Chong Mai and Ren Mai are much more um, active in a way in finding connection and, and, and maintaining the connection um, and not acting by itself. So this all begins uh, the beginning of pregnancy um, that already starts and that is uh, when there's implantation uh, of the cells in the uterus. That's the beginning of life of all of us. Then there's the origin of life and Shoma and Ren Mai start. Now this branch which goes into the vertical column, um, which gives you the C of the Jing Wu, is, is very similar to the kidney uh, tender muscular meridian. If you look at the the flow of the channel of the kidney tender muscular meridian, it starts at kidney one, uh, not the kidney one of the soul, but on the soul of the foot, but more on the medial side of the little toe. And then it flows inside, it flows up, and then it goes inside the vertebral column towards the neck and to meet the bladder um, tender muscular meridian. And, and some people say even that it goes. Uh, to do my and even to the brain. Now, knowing this, um, if you look at it, it means that when there are inherited infertility problems, inherited means immediately you think about chombai. And how do you give access to that inside vertebral channel of chombai is through kidney one of the tender muscular meridian. And you get access to Chong Mai as well on the abdomen side, Ren Mai and Chong Mai, the kidney abdominal points. So when there is an inherited infertility problem, you can treat spleen four, for instance, first, then kidney one, tendon muscular meridian on the medial side of the little toe, and then you add Ren Mai points and even Chong Mai points on the kidney abdominal points to activate that Chong Mai into um, that body of the woman. I've tried it many times, not tried it, I did it many times, and you can really change that problem so that people can conceive. The other parts, apart from Bao Zhong going up to body, let's say the, 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 the abdomen and the chest, when that is affected, you see much more um, problems in the abdomen, like, like gynecology, gynecology problems or digestive problems, 
when it's in the chest, you find lung and heart problems. So it means that when you want to treat that, you can start with spleen four, and you can combine it with pyrifal six as a couple point of thrombi, but that's not even always needed. Um, if you have lung problems, for instance, it's very possible to add lung seven uh, to spleen four, uh, both when you do spleen four and lung seven as tie-in, that really also access the, the abdomen, and the stomach and spleen problems, and you have access to, to the lung area, the chest area. So what I say here is that, although Dr. Bird always said, when you treat Strongby, you need to treat spleen four on one side, and then uh, the copper point on the other side, spleen four, for instance, in male on the left side, and critical six on the right side, which is probably true. Um, but I've learned through the years that when you just do spleen four, and you add, for instance, lung seven, and you use, for instance, some chomai points on the abdomen or uh, on the chest, that you also have access to uh, to chomai, as long as your needle technique is correct. The chomai channel is to see if the trauma reading starts from the weak input. That's CV one. And it comes out of the chi trunk point, runs along the inner side of the thigh. So it means that here we see not the beginning in bowel zone, but in CV1. And CV1 is the where all the, the, the yin chi are gathered. Um, it means that it's already um, post, it's a postnatal trajectory. Uh, like when it starts in bowel zone, there's still this connection to the prenatal, uh, prenatal chi. Uh, when we think about CV1, it's where the three, the three trajectories of Chong Mai, Du Mai, and Ren Mai already start. Uh, so Chong Mai represents the um, comprehensive yin and yang, and then you see Du Mai as initiative, as yang, as creation, and yin as, and the Ren Mai as yin. So you see from CV1, you see this, the three meridians start to flow as a postnatal already chi. So you see often when there are Xiaoyin problems or when people have a, a deep psychological problem or they have no lust for life, uh, it's more related to CV1. And it doesn't mean that you have to treat CV1, but it means that these three channels, they um, are more, more postnatal orientated. So, um, in Japanese acupuncture, for instance, these, uh, these problems are uh, treated by treating stomach uh, 37 and 39, all together with bladder 11. This is very well known, but that's more postnatal uh, problem compared to what we discussed before. Um, CV1 is the foundation of the lower dantian. Maybe that's also important to understand that. So, so when there are lower down chain problems, the foundation is C1. The uh, other points around the lower down chain is the uh, governor four and CV4 and CV8. So this, this kind of figure um, makes the lower down chain area. So when you want to treat the lower down chain, you can also do, for instance, boxer on CV8 and governor four or CV4 and governor 4, or CV4 and, and CV8, that all treats the lower Dantian. And when you add points on the kidney meridian to, to strengthen the kidney energy, that will be done before you actually start to treat trauma, because when the lower Dantian and or the kidney energy is weak, there's no use to, to treat trauma because it doesn't have that foundation. We discussed it already. Um, here you see that Chiang Mai starts from stomach 30, which is parallel to the Yang Ming channel advancing along the left and right side of the navel and scatters one, which is in the middle of the chest. <clears throat> now, this is also a very interesting description because we think nowadays, and, and probably that's correct, 
that parallel to the Yang and Ming channel, that is the kidney energy, it's a kidney channel. And we use the, we see the kidney channel as a pathway of Chiang Mai. But parallel is also a deeper level of Yang Ming, of when you think about the stomach channel, and maybe in the depth, there is another channel, which is Chong. And I know people who treat Chong Mai through the Yang Ming channel. So they, they go deeper with the needle to a deep level. Say so this is Chong Mai, they, they find the Qi of Chong Mai there, and then they bring it up to the stomach channel. So they, they put the needle inside, they turn, make contact with the Qi, and then they bring the Qi up, and they turn again to bring it to the stomach channel, from prenatal to postnatal. I hardly ever do that. I usually see the kidney energy as parallel to Yang Ming channel. So stomach 30, um, sometimes it's called Qi Chong, and sometimes it's called Qi Ji. So in the Suwen and the Nanjing, it's called Qi Ji. And in the Ling Shu, when it describes the flow of Qi, it's called Qi Chong. And Qi Chong is the connection to Qi in Chiang Mai. And Qi Ji is the, the way it flows through the pathway. So it's a street or pathway of Qi. So the pathway of Qi is from the pelvic area to the legs. Uh, to the what I said to stone 42 and from there also to liver one, kidney one and uh, spleen one. Um, some people say that stomach 30 is also a point where, where Ren Mai and Du Mai meet postnatal chi. Um, CV1 of course is a point where you see that Ren and Du come together but also stomach 30 is sometimes seen as a connection to CV1. So that area, that whole area is very important for how Chong Mai um, enables the Ren Mai and Du Mai and Stomach 30 to do their work in life, postnatally. Um, I think personally, if Stomach 30 was not on that spot, it would be a more important point than Stomach 36. I think Stomach 36 is the um, off branch of stomach 30. Uh, you can see similar uh, symptomatology you can treat with stomach 30 as well as stomach 36. But since it's an area which is delicate, uh, you don't treat it so easily, uh, especially in ancient time you didn't. Um, but I think stomach 30 is as important as uh, stomach 36. As you can see here, it's a sea of nourishment entry point, important from Chiang Mai, low in meeting point of stomach and spleen, by version meridian, stomach, TMM meets Chiang Mai. So it, it, it really has access to all the things also stomach 36 has access to. The only difference is that here you see the arrival of the branch from stomach 12 up to the clavicle bone, uh, goes down to stomach 30. It's, it's actually an accident. It's a pathway of the gallbladder and meridian. And the Golden Meridian is, is a meridian which, um, and we come to that maybe at the end of this lecture, uh, what the Golden Meridian means, but for now I can say it's a meridian which is the end of the sequence prenatal, postnatal society. Golden Meridian brings it to, uh, really into the world, and we'll see that later when we discuss some points. Um, so, Stomach 30 already has so has a connection to Chiang Mai, has a connection to stomach and spleen, but also through the gold and the meridian has access to society. So it's really in a, in a very powerful point to, to give your own authenticity into the world. Um, I think we really said all these things already. I think we can skip this one. Maybe this is good for when this, like when there are problems you want to access, like when, well, let's start different. 
the stomach 30 supports the yang transformation into uh, into qi so it means that so i start again stomach 30 supports yang transformation for, for instance it transforms food into qi it means that what you eat is transformed into uh, qi in the in the meridians uh, it means that when there is weakness of the legs not in the form but in just you the legs seem to be normal but you feel really weak and sometimes it goes together with in the pulse you can feel weak blood but it is a reduced strength in the in the feet and in the muscles while the muscles maybe look okay but they still feel weak that's an indication to treat stomach 30. Uh, and in the pelvic area um, kidney stones for instance is is also a way that there is a stagnation of of form uh, because there is a lack of chi so whereas yang shu in the pelvic area you find for instance kidney stones and that also you can treat with stomach 30. often it goes together when people have kidney stones even if they don't suffer from kidney stone the first sign is that they feel weak in the in the uh, muscles of the of the of the of the legs but if you look at that the muscles seem fine that's the stomach 30 indication and i said before if trauma is troubled stomach 30 is painful and pressure so stomach 30 can be seen as as a point which stimulates general vitality as stomach 36 and i must say if you combine it it's really good treatment uh, but again you should often combine it with points where you want the energy to go to so if you want to have it more in the lung area the lung heart area you add cb17 or when you want it more to the chest so the abdominal area you add cb12 um, i think this is this is a point where you can say when you want to access chung Rai, you do for instance spin four as the open point and then with that, you say, what am I going to do with the Chomai energy? I want to bring it to the abdomen. Then you can do stomach 30 and CB12. Or I want to bring it to the chest. Then you can do spleen 4, maybe lung 7 and CB17. So you direct the energy from spleen 4 to a certain area. Um, We'll come back to that later. Um, so, stomach 30 stimulate digestive oil. You can read it yourself. Um, and this is just a small um, part of all the things you can treat with stomach 30. Really, there are much more uh, symptoms treated by and, and diseases treated by stomach 30. But again, if you want to do it through Chiang Mai, you first do spleen 4, then you do stomach 30. And then you maybe do another point where you want the energy to go to. Well, in the text it says, which is parallel to Yang Ming, uh, advancing along the left and right side of the navel. And as I said, that could be also in the depth of the stomach channel. But I usually see the kidney channel as the trauma channel. And the needle technique is here very important. Um, so, when there are, for instance, really postnatal problems, like let's say ovarian cyst or uh, menstrual problems, usually there are postnatal problems. Then you can do first spleen four, then you do, for instance, a kidney point on the abdomen. We'll discuss a few points later. But your needle technique is from the kidney point in the direction of the stomach energy so it's an oblique treatment some people put it directly on the kidney meridian some people put it just one soon more to the medial and then access the energy of the kidney meridian towards the stomach meridian to bring the energy from prenatal to postnatal and when there is a gene qi insufficiency as i discussed before when people grow older their qi their jing qi becomes uh, weakened and they don't have a lust for life anymore or they don't feel any destiny in life uh, their ming is weak 
Then you do, can do the opposite, that from the kidney energy, you, you direct the needle in the direction of the REN wire. Um, and some people treat here the kidney meridian also like you do the kidney meridian on a deep level, you access the chi, and then you bring it up to the kidney, and then you move it all to the stomach energy, all to the REN wire channel. Uh, so your needle technique is really important for your results. Here we see the kidney and stomach channel. And here we see it on, on another visual. Um, and I want immediately to show you when you see here REN4, you see kidney 13 and uh, stomach 28. You saw also the level, uh, the number is gone here. That's called the 27. We will discuss that later when you look this on the horizontal plane, how this actually describes the, the prenatal to the postnatal uh, society kind of chi. Now let's first look to uh, kidney 12. And before we start studying kidney 12, we need to study first REN3. Because REN3 is Zhong Ji, which is another name for not another name, it's a similar name as the North Pole Star. So CV3 is seen as the center of the universe. And the universe in ourselves is us. And the body is seen as the universe. So CV3 is the North Pole Star. It is the mu point, the alarm point of the bladder. It means the three like yin and, and um, and also the TMN of the of the yin of the legs. So it really brings the energy into a center. And from there, and that's very important, it controls the Wei Qi. So it makes a defense mechanism. Like the North Pole Star says, this is my universe. And within that, everything is should be safe. So CB3 um, gives you the surrounding gives you the possibility to live a life in your own world um, so it means that it helps you to find the depth of your being who you are and so when we look from cv3 to kidney 12 which is called great brightness that is the a meeting point of Taiyang. Taiyang means sun. So it's great brightness. Taiyang is as well the water. It's related to water, which is the depth inside, as it is the circumference. It's the most superficial layer of meridians. So CB3 as the beginning, as the North Pole star, immediately says, this is the world in which I live. And so, but it should be from the strength of yourself. So kidney 12 tonifies the kidney, but also astringes, constricts, not constricts, brings the energy of the essence together, but on a more um, manifested level as CV3, for instance, does. <clears throat> so it moves blood and chi in the lower abdomen. And when we look to stomach 29, which is called return, that is when you look to the, the symptomatology and the problems of when you treat stomach 29 is much more on blood, um, physical things, uh, more manifested things. So when there is a problem, for instance, I think that's in the next slide, <clears throat> you see here a lot of uh, male and female reproductive organ problems, um, menstrual problems, that's more manifested. Um, you can treat that, but you need to, to understand first, do I need to, to strengthen the kidney? And how actually is the Renmai? So when Renmai is not um, healthy, then you should start treating Renmai first. You give access to your excess CV3 to give you that center. And when that's done, you can start treating, for instance, kidney 12 towards stomach 29. And what I've done also is 
to do kidney trial and stomach line. You can do it on both sides, but also on one side. So if there are not really manifested problems, um, but it's more into your being like you don't feel the energy to do something, there is no, um, how do you say that, no uh, strength to do things. Uh, but well, you come to, to your practitioner and you say, listen, I feel so exhausted and I, I just want to lay on bed, I don't want to do things and uh, people say I have a fatigue syndrome and so on. Then you have to think, of, first of all, on the red line and on the kidney, but then you can access kidney 12 together, for instance, with CP3, which is not, you don't need to access the stomach or anything. Um, as I say here, kidney 12 levels with the uterus gives power of life, power of the original yang. And then you see with stomach 29, it brings down the yang into the pelvic basin, regulate menses with a stout blood. Again, it's more physical. So we tend to look at the physical problems only and to treat that accordingly. But my um, talk about it is that we always look how is the foundation. It means how is the foundation of the kidney, how is the foundation of the lower jaw, how is the foundation of the chin, and it means also how is the foundation of the jaw line. But you should start with the kidney energy. Um, that's not for now. And when we look to kidney 30, um, then we need to discuss for first the REN4 area. Um, gate of U1 Chi, U1 U1. So it's, you could say, a level further than CV3. CV3 is the pole star, and CV4 opens up the gate of the original chi. That is where it starts. It says also it needs the bao mai. Uh, the bao mai are the uh, internal meridians between the uterus and the heart. Um, there's also something called bao lu, which is the, from the uterus to the kidney. But CV4 makes contact with the bao mai, so it makes the connection between heart and kidney. Therefore, CV4 is often used in Xiaoyin problems when the heart and kidney can't communicate. There are lots of problems uh, from there, but we're not going to discuss it now. The CB4 is one of the points you should access. Um, so the difference with CB3 is that here with CB4 and kidney 13, you see that kidney, kidney 13 is a meeting point of vital chi. Kidney 13 is called chi cave. It is the uh, manifestation of kidney energy into the world. So it tonifies, it tonifies kidney and gin, but it can only do it when CV3 is healthy and when CV4 is healthy. If these are not healthy, it will not happen. So first you look at the Renmai channel. So then you can do kidney 13 as giving vitality and the moving of, of yin. Um, and then when you go to the next slide, you see that it is the barrier point of ascending yin. It mobilizes yin in the pelvis. Okay, so, but it comes from that foundation CV3 and 4. And when we look to the stomach 28, the water passage, again, that's much more uh, physical. It talks about body fluids, it talks about urine, it, it causes a clear stasis and damp heat. Again, that's much more physical, much more postnatal. And similar is that when you want to treat these physical problems, you take care of the kidney energy of the run my channel, and then you treat from the kidney energy in the direction of the stomach energy, or you do that together. Um, kidney 13 is, is uh, um, has, has two different names. On the right side, it's called infant door. On the left side, it's called uterine gate. And so these points are very important when there is infertility um, to, to treat these points. But again, not without treating Chong, Spring 4, and Ren 4. Um, 
Here you see the how it comes together. Moles getting 13 moles, how they gain moles of blood due to cold. That's that's I think if there is cold in the pelvic area, then kidney 13 is very much indicated. I do it often with uh, with moxa. Um, even you can do it in two different treatments that you start first with REN4 and kidney 13, and then the next treatment when everything is more warm and has more chi, then you can do a stomach 28. Uh, this is already thank you, but I forgot to tell you about Gorba the 27. Um, Gorba the 27 is called a Wu Shu, which is fifth pivot. So it helps the yang to descend and the yin to ascend. So it means that it brings yang and yin together. And with these, you create something inside yourself with which you can uh, connect to the world. So it means that when you start with CD4, which is the, the source of you and she, and then from that to KP13 to the stomach area, and then to go better, 27, you're able, it enables you to live your life in society. Um, I think that was a quick, fast lecture about Chomai Peter. Thank you very much, Johan. So I, I guess I want to say thank you so much for presenting to us on the Chong Mai. And I'm sure that many people uh, have found what you had to present and share with us uh, very interesting and fascinating, but hopefully they will also be able to find that useful in clinic. Um, so I do have a couple of questions that I'd like to ask. Uh, if you could please share those insights with us, that would be helpful. You mentioned about kidney one and you treat that on the medial side of the little toe, like the jing point, as opposed to um, the other location of kidney one. Is it possible to just talk a little bit about that? Yeah, the, the, the tenderness meridian of the kidney meridian doesn't start at kidney one, on this, like bubbling spring it's called, uh, yeah. on, on the sole of the foot, but it starts on the medial side opposite to bladder 67. So when you want to access the kidney tenderness meridian, you access it through that point, not through the point on the sole of the foot. Okay, thanks very much for clarifying that. I appreciate it. Um, I just uh, had another question. Uh, I was, I would expect that uh, people who have had cesarean uh, section during their birth, um, that I would say that that would affect the Chong Mai on quite a deep level. What are your thoughts on how uh, cesarean actually affects the Chong Mai and how to actually make changes? Well, not only cesarean, I think every scar will affect the meridian, which is cut. Um, I, think, I think it should be done after every operation that the scar is treated. Um, the way I treat it, and how I learned it, is that it's very simple that you, when there is a scar, you treat on one side, on both sides of the scar, you treat with a needle. Uh, if it's just a straight scar, just one needle here, one needle there, and you leave it for 20 minutes. And that really um, changes the quality of the, of the chi going through the, the scar. I know there are many more methods. Um, what, you, what you should diagnose first is that when you touch the scar, that people say that it feels different. And sometimes it's numb. Sometimes people feel it's odd, and that should change after directly after treatment. When you put the two needles, you leave it for 20 minutes, and then you ask people to touch it. They say, yeah, hey, this is different. It feels more myself. This is what you usually hear. Then you know you, you did right. So any scar will affect the meridian system. Uh, yeah. And I think every scar um, <coughs> needs to be treated in that way. Okay, thank you for your insights on that. Now, there's a couple of uh, other questions that I have. Uh, I have heard that Dr. Van Buren said not to treat Chong Mai with women. Why, why is that, or is that, is that correct? Is that what he said, and why is that? Yeah, he said you shouldn't treat, um, that is correct. He said you shouldn't treat Chong Mai in women. 
there are some meridians you should treat in man, but let's talk about Yongma. Uh, and he said, if you do it by mistake, then uh, ask him to come back and treat Yin Wai Mai. Uh, so when you do Chiang Mai in women, you need to also do Yin Wai Mai in the next treatment in the next coming week or something like that. Um, I've never got a real straight answer of him. I asked, I asked it a few times and every time when I asked that, he said, well, if you do it, do Yin Wei Mai, but he never gave an answer. But I think it is probably because the Chiang Mai can be of a very young nature. And so it can disturb the, the balance of the Yin areas in women, which is, is so important to women to have a good balance in the Yin areas, which Yin Wei Mai does. It really balances the yin, the yin areas, the Yin spaces in the body. And I think Chiang Mai, as being a very young quality, uh, can be a very young quality in his action. But in his origin, actually, is very female, as I said in the lecture, that, that uh, Chiang Mai and Ren Mai actually are responding qualities. And that is how it should be. But so with women, that part of responding quality is most important. So when the Chiang Mai becomes too young, too active, it can disturb the energy of a woman. Um, that's the only answer I have. It is not his answer. I never got an answer. But I think you can use Chiang Mai in women as long as you, you find this depth in the pulse. If it is, uh, as I described in the beginning, you, you don't find this powerful energy in the depth of the pulse, um, then there's need to treat Chiang Mai. But if it rises too much up, if it is it's too superficial. You don't want that in women. It needs to calm down them. So be careful with treating women uh, with trauma in that case. Yeah. Okay. You understand? Yeah. Thanks. Thanks very much for that. So I'd say that uh, you you also would would tell us to use quite a lot of differentiation and caution in treating it if you are going to actually treat Chong Mai and women. Not yes. just not just willy nilly. As we say, willy nilly in Australia it just means don't just treat it flippantly or just uh, without, no, this, without. Not just like I see a symptom and treat Chombai. Be careful with it because it's a very uh, powerful. You hear maybe an alarm now outside. It's not nothing happening here in Holland. They do it every first Monday at 12 o'clock. They do this alarm. So there's nothing happening here. It takes oh, a few minutes. Let's go. It's a test. <laughs> okay, so I have an, I have another question. Um, so, um, can you say a little bit more about the couples of the extra channels, like for example, the Chong Mai related to the Yin Wei Mai and and the Du Mai with the Yang Cha Mai, so on and so forth? Um, yes, that's a very interesting question, and uh, of course we know how how Chong Mai is related to Yin Wei Mai. Maybe if you allow me, I can I can bring up another. Um, if I bring up this one, here you see a uh, picture of extra meridians, where this is the yang side. Yeah, you, this is the beginning of it. Uh, we see this is the beginning. Like this, the one is, and then you have yang and yin. And then it splits up again to a yang side. You see here the organization of the outer world. So how you organize yourself in the world. That is covered by Dai Mai and Yang Wei Mai. Dai Mai is a very interesting uh, channel because Dai Mai combines the Du Mai, the Ren Mai and Chong Mai. Uh, it, it envelops these, uh, these energy. Therefore, when you see for instance, problems in the Chiang Mai, and people also have problems in the world, then you should start first with Dai Mai to release the blockage maybe of the lower pelvic area to allow the energy of Du Mai, Ren Mai, and Chiang Mai to flow because the Dai Mai is constricted. And so, um, so when you go and see to, to the next, uh, you see Ren Mai, Yin Chiang Mai, Yin Wei Mai, and Chiang Mai, and you see Chong Mai and Yin Wai Mai organize the inner world. That's where they are combined. But as I said, when the outer world is a problem, 
then you should always start with Dai Mai. So then you can couple Chiang, Chiang Mai with Dai Mai instead of with Yin Wei Mai. And so Dai Mai and Chiang Mai organize the inner outer world relationship as Yin Yang, while Yin Wei Mai and Chiang Mai organize the inner spaces in the body. And in this picture, you see, for instance, a picture about hormonal treatments of the external meridians. You see that Chiang Mai and Dai Mai are connected to each other, yeah, inner outer. But here you see how it actually, how we work uh, with the manifestation of life in the body. You see that Chiang Mai is the mother of all the meridians and is related to Du Mai. It's a very young, active meridian. So when you combine Du Mai and Chiang Mai, you work much more on the yang activity, while when you combine Chung Mai with Yin Wei Mai, you balance the yin spaces. And when you combine Chung Mai with Dai Mai, you balance the outer and inner qualities of a being. So it's very important to see which point you add with, with Chung Mai. So when you do, for instance, Spleen 4, and you do, let's say, Kidney 13, and you do Gorbana 27, as I discussed at the end of the lecture, you work much more on inner outer relationship. While when you do spleen four and you do kidney 13 and you do do my four, for instance, then you work much more on the yang activity of Chong Wai. When you do spleen four, pericard six and kidney 13, you work much more on the yin spaces and how to balance them. Yeah, that's that's excellent. So thanks so much for, for that detailed explanation. That was very helpful. Um, I have one other question. Um, so you mentioned that with pulse diagnosis, Dr. Van Buren felt Chong Mai at a deep level of the liver pulse. Uh, how is that for the other extraordinary vessels? Um, the the Dumai pulse is felt on a deep level of the heart. Um, the Yang Chao on the deep level of kidney, uh, Ren Mai on the deep level of lung, Dai Mai on the deep level of spleen, and Yin Shao Mai on the deep level of uh, heart constrictor or pericardium. The similar qualities like this sucking quality. <laughs> so that will give us some insight as to how to diagnose in this specific yeah. case. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Excellent. That's excellent. So that's pretty much all of the questions um, that I have, I guess, related to this particular lecture that you've just given. Uh, I do want to thank you for sharing all those insights uh, with us. So that were very um, helpful, I guess, at the end of the lecture, just to clarify a few things. But I would like us to talk briefly about what is coming up in Australia this year that you're going to be presenting in a couple of months from now. And Hopefully we'll be able to record them too. And for anyone that, that wants to come along to the actual live events, that'd be great. And, um, but if you can tell us a little bit about what we'll be covering in those seminars and who might be interested in attending each of those events, depending on their interests and focuses. So um, as I mentioned at the beginning of this lecture, before we started, uh, we have a number of different seminars. So what I'm going to do is go through those, those lists. If you can tell us a little bit about what's going to feature in those, that'd be great. So for the pediatric acupuncture, childhood development related pathologies, diagnostics and treatment, that's going to be in Brisbane and Melbourne. Yeah, if you can tell us a little bit about that, that would be great. Pediatrics is, yeah, it's, it's a major subject. It's really, it's a big subject. Uh, so we have to compromise a bit and to do it in one day. It means that what we're going to do is we will talk about the difference between treating children and, ad and adults. And I will cover certain um, diseases or symptomatology of children, like, like uh, uh, for instance, uh, lingering factors in the body, or, or uh, I think we discuss also headaches, as far as I remember. Um, so we discuss a few diseases uh, children come up with uh, in clinic, and after that, we will discuss the development of children from conception to a few years of age. So it means that um, what happens during pregnancy. And I will um, 
related to the 10 uh, heavenly stamps. The development in 10 months is according to the 10 heavenly stamps, and we discuss every month and to see what can happen and what is the influence on it on the development of children later. And then we'll, we'll go back to these diseases we discussed and see how you actually can see the origin of the problem instead of that you see somebody with headache and you can say, oh, I can treat this at this point. But if the origin is more on a deeper level which started from pregnancy, um, you can treat it more on a deeper level. And we'll discuss also a way of upbringing, when my upbringing and to my way of upbringing. And I think in the Western world, we have more do my upbringing and we see what the effects are for children, how that affects them as well, uh, what the effects are on these diseases we discussed before. That's what we're going to do with the pediatric course. And then probably I'll, if there's time enough, I will give a demonstration on how to treat how to needle children. Sounds great. So I'm looking forward to that one for sure, and I'm sure a number of, I'm sure a number of our uh, our students are going to be looking forward to that. Uh, our attendees. So that should be great. Um, now I just want to ask about uh, the uh, evening lecture that you're doing in Sydney. That's the introduction to Nagging Pulse Diagnostics and Rapid Diagnosis using Observation of Spirit Shen and Facial Color. So that's like a a short but sweet. Um, clinically applicable seminar that, that you're going to be giving. Can you tell us a little bit about that one, please? Yeah. <clears throat> I, I usually tell my students that when uh, a patient rings the bell door or knocks on the door, um, that's, that's where diagnosis starts. How does he knock on the door? Like very soft or hard or like his fist or... Um, how does, he, how does he enter? How does the patient enter? How, what is your first impression? And uh, so what we're going to do is to, to study uh, each other, um, the way you give impression. And then from that impression, and that's based on, on some face diagnostic, but also on posture, on color, on the way we talk, the way we stand, et cetera, et cetera. And to check that in the pulse before we actually start asking any question. So I want to improve the skills of intuition, you say, but it's not intuition because we use not only the intuition, but we use actually a certain patterns in ourselves. We, we hardly ever do it consciously. So when you walk in the street, you see somebody and you immediately can say, ah, he's sick. Where does that come from? It's not your intuition because you have seen something or you see something in, the street, in somebody in the street and you say, gosh, he's worried. Why do you say that? because he has wrinkles or he, his posture is different. And so we will discuss certain aspects of just Chinese medicine to, to organize it in yourself that the first impression is more under control and we will check that in certain aspects of the pulse. That's what we're going to do in this three, three hour lecture. That sounds like a fascinating uh, little lecture that we're yeah. gonna do. So I'm really looking forward to that one. I think it'll be great. And um, I always find that that being able to pick up information just by looking at people straight away, it, it can actually be very accurate if you really develop that faculty. So um, learning more about how to develop that faculty is, is going to be pretty exciting. Um, so let me ask about the next one that you're going to be doing in Sydney, and that is the, the Jing Qi Shen Classical Acupuncture Pulse Diagnosis diagnostics and treatments of the three treasures in clinical practice, which I've never actually seen such a seminar on this topic presented ever in Australia, to my knowledge. Even, even in Europe, it's, it's, it amazes me always that we talk so much about Jin Shi Shen and we never teach it in pulse diagnosis. And I, I had some teachers who taught me that. Um, and it is the foundation of pulse taking, I think. If you're able to feel Jing Chi Shen and to treat accordingly, you, then it doesn't matter if you're a TCM practitioner or Japanese or Korean or five element uh, practitioner. It doesn't matter because you start with the Jing Chi Shen and um, normally that, that um, seminar is, is about five days. I will try to 
to do it in a way that we can do it in the days we agreed on. And it will be mainly on Jin and Shen. That we are able to feel the Shen, but also the five different Shen, like like the Wu, the, the, the Yi and the Po and the Hun and the Tzu. And, and to, to test that in the past, to diagnose it in the past, if you're right. So we'll discuss the Shen in detail. And we will discuss the Jing also to feel the quality of the Jing, but also the quality of the Jing of the past. So how was it a year ago, or five years ago, or 10 years ago, what happened in somebody's life? And how is the Jing brought into the body? Because if the Jing is just there in the kidney area, how does it go to, to the body? How does it go to the extremities, extremities? And which energy is responsible for that? And how do you feel that in the pulse? And uh, so we will also um, examine that. And, and after the lecture, you will be able to feel the Jing, to feel the Shen. And from that, you can go to your, uh, your own technique. Uh, when you're a Japanese acupuncturist, you can just do whatever you do, but first uh, treat the foundation, for instance, the Jing or the Shen. So that will be the, the, um, the aim of the course. Yeah, so I guess it, it doesn't matter if someone focuses on a specific style of acupuncture, whether it's um, Chinese styles of acupuncture, Japanese styles of acupuncture, um, some of the more well, I've also had, I also had a herbalist in, in, in my seminars where I teach this, that, that you are able to treat, to, to diagnose the qi, the, the jing, the, the, the shen, and so you can continue after. Yeah, yeah that's, that's going to be really valuable. So... I think that's going to be something that will be a real eye-opener for a lot of people. I'm definitely looking forward to that one because um, I guess it's concepts we talk about all the time, the Jing, the Qi and the Shen, but being able to identify and then apply treatment to that in clinic, I believe is going to be very powerful. So um, that's going to be a good one for sure. <laughs> uh, so I just want, before we uh, finish up, I, I do want to also ask about um, acupuncture according to philosophy of heavenly stems and earthly branches 2019 so that's the 12 earthly branches the Dijir and the deep chi or energy the foundations and philosophy applied in clinic so I guess this is um, another section in the total curriculum uh, or the foundation curriculum that you teach on the, the acupuncture according to philosophy of heavenly stems and earthly branches so when last time you came out in 2017, you covered the stems and, and the great movements. Yeah. And we recorded that particular seminar and that will be released uh, some stage soon. Or depending when you watch this particular video, it might already be released. Um, but, but yeah, so that will be available on the Geology website. But I, I really um, would like to hear about um, what will be covered in this particular one coming up. And... Um, also, I think you'd mentioned to me someone does not have had to have done the part one to be able to do this because even though uh, the information for both have a connection, people can take away what they learn from this one as a standalone and, and apply that quite powerfully into clinic. So if you can tell me a little bit about all of that, that'd be great. Yeah. The, the 12 branches is the background of the Chinese hourly clock, first of all. Um, yes, you can you can just follow this similar as this uh, this similar as just one section, but it is it's part of the whole curriculum. And we will do also uh, an evening where we combine the stems and branches. Uh, I give some more insight in that, but that's only for people who already studied the great movements and stems before. But the rest of the the seminar days is just about the branches. Um, we will discuss, it is difficult to say in a few words, the deep energies. But the deep energies is something brought by Dr. Van Buren. It's not brought by any other teacher. And it tells you a lot about the, uh, the deep qualities of the Chinese hourly clock, as, as you know it. Um, it is a part of the section which you can give a bit, uh, like a short lecture, just a one day lecture you could do. But since I don't come to Australia very often, it's not that I come there every year. Uh, I decided to extend it with some information from the extended course. So after people have studied stems and branches, they, uh, they can study further and they go more into trigrams and hexagrams as well with the stems and branches. 
And so what I do now is, is I will teach the 12 branches. I will teach the seasonal energies relates to that, the deep energies relates to that. But after that, we'll be going to the related hexagrams and the, um, the how do you say that, the consequences for that in, in treatment. And, and probably I will have time to go into the hidden stems, as it's called, even if you didn't study great movement and stems before. I can say a few words about the hidden stems to treat the 12 earthly branches. It is a constitutional concept, so it, it means that when you are born with, let's say, uh, a small intestine branch, it tells you something about the strength of the small intestine, but also the weakness of other meridians, and how you treat these weaknesses through acupuncture. And we will combine that with certain symptomatology and diseases, so I will also do some post-diagnosis to um, enable people to diagnose how to treat, let's say, a small intestine branch in your birth chart, as well related to deep energies, as well related to hexagrams and trigrams. So it will enable you to, to treat the constitution, to treat the own energy of a patient as a foundation for other problems um, which come up. Yeah, so when you balance that, other problems will disappear. Well, that sounds that sounds really great, and and also um, from uh, the last time you came out here, uh, I really understood that actually the calculation of the of the stems and branches and how applicable it is in clinic is based on the way that you teach it is actually qu quite straightforward and very different to how other teachers may have presented it in in other capacities. So um, so yeah, I'm. I'm definitely looking forward to, to learning more and taking it to the next step. Uh, hopefully, hopefully it is practical. As, as Dr. Van Buren always said, philosophy needs to be practical. If it's just philosophy, then it's just for your own mind, but you don't do anything with it. You need to have it practical. Yeah. So I think that's, that's going to be great. So looking forward to that. And, um, and yeah, so I think we're probably about finished up with the lecture now. So I wanted to thank you once again so much for, for presenting to us. And uh, I think it will be an, an eye opener for a lot of people with uh, some aspects of, of the Chong Mai because even though we're taught about these things on a, what I might say, a superficial level in some uh, like undergraduate degrees and, and possibly even in continuing education as well we might actually notice that um, we might only get taught on a superficial level. So it seems that in a short space of time, you've actually gone quite deep on that and brought a lot of light to, to a lot of people on the applications of the Chiang Mai. So that's, that's really great. So I really look forward to seeing you in October and of course, during the online seminars that we have. So, you know, it's always good to see that. So it will be great when we actually get those online seminars up of yours pretty soon. And I hope everyone out there enjoyed the lecture. And uh, I guess I want to sign off now. So if, uh, if everyone, uh, when they watch this, if they can give a little hand clap to Johan, that'd be great. But you don't have to if you don't want, but um, so I just wanted to sign off now. This is Peter from Geology, and I look forward to seeing you at one of our live seminars sometime soon. Thank you.